you always got to be careful about who you endorse and also who you trust when making your own investment decisions. And this is why. Hi, guys. I'm Jillian Sidoti, and this is Nate Dodson. And we're going to be talking about FTX again. It's just way too much fun to watch this <laughs> unravel. The slow S show as it goes by. I'm obsessed with FTX in a way that's not even healthy anymore, Nate. I'm sorry. But Sam Bankman Fried's professor mother penned 2013 essay, Shredding Philosophy of Personal Responsibility. Everybody is who their parents raise us to be. And between that, which I think is telling unto itself, but then his young girl girlfriend's dad and over at MIT managing and overseeing the head of the SEC. I mean, it's like the proverbial crap rolls uphill, downhill, apparently all over the last hill to, to fight on. Oh, it's ridiculous. And have you seen, like, I don't know if it was Business Insider, but there was some reporter that, you know, after this is all happening, he they write saying Sam Bankman Fried and ask him, hey, can we do an interview? What happened to, you know, regulations? And this guy basically says, fuck regulations. Regulators ruin everything. Like he had never any intention of doing the right thing. He just wanted to see how long. I really feel like this is a game to him. Like he didn't care if he got caught. Yes, but to, to take it one step further, he set up offshore. Mm -hmm. He tried to get be beyond the jurisdiction of the SEC, although he tried to do business with the investors with the populace of the U.S. And I got to say, I have seen so much of that, especially in the crypto space over the last few years. It's terrifying to me. And in general, that's why I'm actually, the U.S., we have our problems. We have our regulatory issues, without a doubt. But there's at least some sense of playing by the rules is required, or the consequences are massive, that it's not just Sam Bateman Freed doing it offshore. It's quite a few different groups that have set up in the Cayman Islands, Dubai, Bahamas, different jurisdictions thinking that since I'm offshore, we don't have to play by the rules at all. And they're not. And people are really getting hurt. Right. Here's the thing. The reality is that they're asking the opinion of a justice will determine whether he's a criminal or not. Or I suppose, you know, the wheels of justice will determine whether he's a criminal or not. Or maybe Maybe not. Who knows? But the reality is you're innocent until proven guilty. But with that being said, what he said was you said a lot of stuff about how you wanted to make regulations just good ones. Was that pretty much PR too? There's no one really out there making sure good things happen and bad things don't. I kind of agree with them, right? Like in my opinion, both the DOJ and the SEC legislate by enforcement. So, yes. you know, like, so, and what that means is, is instead of of getting ahead and putting in enforcement provisions in place or rules in place, they're like, oh, we decided that that's a bad idea and we're going to go after you. Or instead of giving somebody a warning, like, hey, we think what you're up to might be no good. We suggest stopping or we're going to take action. There's none of that. They just wait till the bad thing happens and then they attack. And sometimes they attack, they're usually just attacking little guys. And look at this. This is being reported as bigger than WorldCom, bigger than Enron, bigger than Elizabeth Banks, Elizabeth Holmes, bigger than Bernie Madoff. When you're looking at things like that, you kind of, we still haven't gotten any control under the situation. Everything keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Is he wrong? Do regulators he, really make things better or do they make them worse? Uh, the answer is absolutely maybe. The fact of the matter is, and I'm actually, for all of the flaws that the FCC and the DOJ has in their reactionary, why didn't you do something about this a long time ago, you no, know, they wait for an implosion for a complete crash to say, oh, we don't just need to fix this one issue. We need to now overregulate everyone. And they definitely tend to go after the people that are not connected or that <laughs> can't defend themselves. So they really aren't targeting the, a lot of the sources of the problem. Right. So there's, without a doubt, a big issue with what they're doing and how they're doing it. Now they're going to hyper overregulate. My opinion is it kind of wait for one of these crashes to happen that everybody's seeing and now they get to say, well, this is why we need to be able to have jurisdiction and regulate all of it. 
And that's exactly what they'll do next. Yeah, it's almost as if the rules are not set up to protect the people, but they're set up to protect the corporations or, you know, this, yeah, this protect the system. I mean, I think we'll see what happens with our friend, Mr. Bankman Freed and his friends. I don't get this Caroline Ellison. I don't understand. She seems like a relatively smart woman. She went to MIT in mathematics and like, it seems like she got into drugs, you know, amphetamines and was taking those on a regular basis, according to her own Twitter. I mean, she literally says that she doesn't like life not on amphetamines, you know, and yet people trusted them with billions of dollars. So who's really to blame here other than the investors themselves for not, you know, but in the yeah. hedge fund, absolutely. People yeah. that gave them billions of money to trade and invest and create these worthless tokens and worthless coins that just ran a bull market. Yeah, those investors and some of the biggest names are some of the investors, the promoters, the sponsors, and they're going to have their own reckoning and their own problems. But when it comes to FTX as just a platform for trading, there shouldn't have been any trusting them to be yeah. a fiduciary beyond I put in five Bitcoin. I expect <laughs> my account to maintain five Bitcoin. Like that doesn't seem like a whole massive level of trust that these platforms are doing what they say they are going to do. Right. Well, it's funny. I just clicked on here a Fox business, a Fox business article on Caroline Ellison and how did she end up at the FTX collapse? And they used Jordan Belfort, for those of you who don't know, the Wolf of Wall Street as the expert on the matter. And, you know, honestly, you know what? They're right. He is an expert on them and the matter of stealing. But honestly, everybody out there, everybody who follows Jordan Belfort on Twitter, on TikTok, on wherever you follow him, who goes to watch his talks. Stop. The man's a thief and he didn't pay back the $250 million he stole. He connived his way out of paying it back, never paid a dime back. Stop giving this guy a platform. But it's a symptom of the same problems. He was just early, an early problem and he was doing the pump and dumps. I mean, yeah. those things to this day are still happening. Yeah. And it's really exactly what the whole FTX system it just in terms of them creating coins creating crypto promoting it getting it out there riding a wave of news and what they're doing mm -hmm. and where are they at today mm -hmm. none mm -hmm. of them are doing well there is absolutely nothing different between jordan belfort and bankman free oh no no they're the same that's why jordan's such an expert on bank he, he knows what he's talking he's about. he knows exactly what he's talking about like honestly so what do you think happens next like it's the wheels of justice are very slow we haven't seen any extraditing or movement or anything like that we have seen the a new ceo appointed a, a court appointed ceo john ray and john ray has said he was quoted as saying Saying that this is worse. He oversaw Enron and he literally said this is the worst abuse he's ever seen. Co-mingling. There was no systems at, in place at all. There was no checks and balances. There was no cash management. They used to do expense reports by text, like some messaging system, and they'd approve the expense reports with like emojis. <laughs> Of course, you have to have the thumbs up. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, it's just crazy to me. But Nate, to my question, what do you think happens next? I think the wheels of justice move slowly. They will try to collect whatever they can, wherever they can. I've already read that the new CEO and the bankruptcy courts, they're trying to recollect where clients were taking their funds out. This mm -hmm. is a... Bernie Madoff situation that some people were in the know earlier than others mm -hmm. and took all their money and ran mm -hmm. and leaving the truly innocent that knew nothing, holding their bag the bags, of yeah. nothing completely. Mm -hmm. So I think the bankruptcy court will slowly collect all the assets, slowly kind of equitably share them between all of the losses. But I've seen the top 50 creditors, they're down like $3 billion. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that what doesn't happen through the bankruptcy system is that the court say, well, you know what? They have a higher or a better claim. So we're going to pay off some of these creditors with big claims to the detriment of all of the investors, mm -hmm. all of the traders, 
all the kids out there that were putting their trust into a platform. So that's what I hope doesn't happen, but I hope everybody is treated equally and they collect as much as they possibly can. But I think even Bertie Madoff, it probably, and this is just making stuff up, probably took four or five years at a minimum to find where everything's at and to bring it under the bankruptcy trustee jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it was a long time. And then they had to like, they had to auction off his personal assets as well. So it was a huge thing. And I don't know, I am acting like this is like my gossip. This is the gossip I like. And I feel like this is really like riveting entertainment. I stand by saying that I feel terrible for the people lost money. It's not fair. It just goes to show you how how no one is paying attention to what is going on. No one is paying attention. No one is protecting investors. And you cannot, you have got to people who are looking to invest or invest in alternative assets. You have always got to do your due diligence, your research. It doesn't matter. So many people were in love with this guy. People who normally didn't did commercials for this guy, you know, and they're all getting sued now. Tom Brady, Giselle Bunchen, uh, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, uh, Larry Day. David did a bunch of them, Steph Curry. They're all getting sued. And I just think like, where were their advisors doing due diligence? And I want to know, I just want one celebrity. I know a lot of celebrities watch this podcast. So listen up. I just want of you celebrities that watch Nate and I religiously every week. Tell me if you turned it down. Did any celebrity out there turn down the opportunity to do an FTX commercial? I want to hear all about it and why. And this is a, a total left turn. Morgan Freeman introducing the World Cup. And, you know, a lot of celebrities absolutely turned it down. A lot of musicians, Rod Stewart refused to go and perform at the World Cup because of the humanitarian abuses that Qatar has caused. But then you got Morgan Freeman saying, okay, sure, he'll do it. But I think at the end of the day, just kind of everybody has their price. Yeah. And this is a similar situation that I don't, I would argue that the celebrities that did promote FTX didn't really care about it, but they sure do enjoy getting paid a lot for their time. Everybody likes getting paid for their time, but you have to think, is this really something I want to put my name on? I mean, I think it's great that Rod Stewart said he wasn't going to do it. I mean, how much money do you really need? I think, you know, Morgan Freeman probably has enough money. Is he just not paying attention? Does he just not care? I don't know. Less than a decade ago, he had a uh, $400 million divorce settlement with his ex. Oh. Yeah. So he may have, his price got lowered right about that time. Wow. And I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard a, a quote of, um, you know, some interviewers asking, well, what's the, your favorite parts that you played? And his response being the ones that paid me the most. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, some more advice for you celebrities out there, because, you know, I know you're listening to my advice. People are always not going to remember what you didn't do, but they'll definitely remember what you did do if you did something the bad. So be on the right side of history like that. I don't know. And more than that, fallout and liabilities. I think there could be some real risk for some of these celebrities that are out there saying, trust this guy, trust this platform, put your money here and detrimental reliance. I mean, I would put my money in there, but for this amazing commercial with celebrities that I intimately trust. I remember, yeah, no, I'm with you, Nate, because I remember seeing one of those Larry David commercials thinking I missed out on something. And fortunately, I'm incredibly lazy and forgetful. So I forgot to even check, you know, the FTX platform. I have money in Coinbase. I have in a, we talked about this previously, I have money in a digital wallet um, and I have some crypto assets elsewhere as well. I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot of crypto assets. Thank God. But I do have some. And when I saw that Larry David commercial, I felt like, oh, maybe I missed out on something. Maybe I missed the boat. Maybe it's too late, whatever. And then I forgot about it later. And then everything blew up. Super grateful I didn't listen to Larry David's advice. But yeah, I mean, there is clout, even for somebody like me who researches these things and has a lot of experience in these things. You know, you see somebody like that who has credibility and, you know, shows a modicum of genius in their field, which I believe Larry David 
does with the writing and things that he, he's been able to accomplish. Yeah, you trust it, right? It's not fair to not be held accountable when you choose to put your name behind something. I don't care if you didn't know. You are a wealthy man who should have asked your advisors to do some due diligence and, and really thought about, do I want to be offering financial products? FTX isn't fidelity. Without a doubt. But to also reflect on what you're saying, which is the smartest thing to do, Coinbase actually is a registered broker dealer. They're regulated in mm -hmm. the United States. They're overseeing everything that they're doing. Having your own wallet, it's within your own control. You're not relying on these platforms, FTX or anybody else to maintain your coins. But I will stand on top of that mountain and say, when you hear this white elephant, invest over here in Dubai and the Cayman Islands and Bahamas because we're trading and making so much money. You can too, just give it to us. It's one of the saddest things that ever happened to me. I had this uh, client, he actually committed suicide. Oh, He was living in Miami and there was a hedge fund out of the Bahamas and they were pay paying an amazing, you know, 20, 25% annualized return. And they had for years. I'm sure you're seeing where this is going. Yeah. So this guy goes out, he brings all of his clients in, all of his friends, mm -hmm. all of his family, mm -hmm. right up until the Ponzi crumble. The FBI shows up at his doorstep and he didn't make it the week before it just, it took him down to nothing. So it really is super important, in my opinion, whatever the problems are in the US with the DOJ, with the SEC, and they make mistakes. At the end of the day, we're all human. They definitely make mistakes, but at least they're trying to generally protect the populace. Maybe just not the best way possible. You are so much more optimistic and trusting than I am, Nathaniel. But I like that about you. I, I do, do, I do. <laughs> and I will say this, there's a lot worse governments in the world than the USA. I just feel like, I'll tell you, I always hearken back to a professor of mine. He was super liberal professor and he was a historian. And I took a class called The World Since 1945 with him. And I loved this professor. He was a great guy. Even though I didn't always share his worldview, I totally respected him. And I remember one day in class, a student raised his hand and he's like, he was on a rant, right? And a student raised his hand. He goes, why do you hate the United States so much? And the professor said, I don't hate the United States at all. I just know we can do better. And that's exactly how I feel about it. I just know we can do better. We know better and we can do better. We are constantly casting judgment on other countries and other governments. We can do better. So I've never forgotten that. And to agree more, but we're all people at the end of the day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm Jillian Sidoti. I don't know. I feel like we're going to be doing more stuff on this FTX thing. So stay tuned because it's like a drama unraveling before our eyes. And this is... And I'm Nate Dodson. And, and this, this is, is why. why. <laughs>